Today on the breakfast, many passengers feared injured while several others kidnapped as a train conveying passengers from Abuja to Kaduna was attacked by gunmen suspected to be bandits in Kaduna State. Vice President Jimmy Oshibajo and former President Olusegun Obasanjo harp on the need to strengthen democracy in Nigeria and Africa. Just what are the roles of the citizenry ahead of the 2023 elections? And as always, we're delving to the front pages of the national dailies with an analyst. Good morning. Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadoni. And I am Messia Boko. Beautiful morning to you and thanks for joining us. Yes, uh, it is a beautiful morning, but yesterday, uh, late in the evening, uh, Nigerians uh, you know, were greeted with uh, a gruesome attack uh, along the Kaduna Abuja you know, rail track. Uh, we understand mercy that um, bandits um, attacked um, the train on route um, Abuja and that many have been feared them. Um, kidnapped uh, and um, it is really a sad situation, Mercy. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very sad, uh, and that's because just yesterday we also talked about the fact that an airport was uh, attacked in Kaduna. It's in Kaduna State. So it feels like Kaduna, it's, you know, it's like news, a and a, a lot's actually going. But you know how um, the body language of the government, the state, and at the federal level has not really shown any um, concern as regards tackling this. You can see some of the pictures, you know, from that sad incident that happened. That would probably be from, you know, bullets or um, forceful entry to it. As we hear, this is not the first time this has happened. No, it's not. Where you have this explosive on the, tra uh, the train track, and then, of course, it derails the train, uh, and, and then they have the opportunity, you know, to go mm. ahead and cause this mayhem. Very, very sad. It calls for a lot of concern and worry. And I, I remember the time where, you know, there was some sort of inspection in Lagos South last year. And I happened to be around, you know, for, for that inspection. And I did mention, you know, to those questions that were being popped up, which, you know, I'm sure that no one paid attention to because of the eminent threats that we witness. Not everybody witnessed. It was just a minute threat, right? It was just insignificant. I'm not sure that, you know, anyone considered that. But, you know, that's where my question came out when we had time, you know, to interact with the authorities. I put out this question and I asked, um, what, what are the measures to what, are, what what measures have been put to ensure that you know the, the train, um, you know the trainway or the railway entirely, the entire system is protected, right? Because if you find out these trains are not uh, the, the the train tracks are not in in commercial areas, they are in isolated places, right? And so you don't expect even if that. The, that, that might be the case, but you, you can't even have it. It's not even possible. So it has to be in isolation. But the question that was put out was that, yes, um, as always, we would always have a question to answer, which really didn't make any sense. Because at the time when we were moving, I mean, the train was moving from Lagos, you know, trying to navigate to Ibadan, even though we didn't eventually get to Ibadan. But you saw uh, young lads, children across, throwing stones, Mm. At the train, mm. throwing stones, and they were throwing stones. I think what actually is it's not like it stopped them. To me, that was a threat. And I'm like, why would this be happening? And so the question came, but of course, there would always be a ready made answer for any question and not paying attention to it. So it's, it's really sad, very sad, very unfortunate, but it just shows that we have not really taken seriously the issue of security. Uh, disbanded mm. just as on the 26th you had the attack in Kaduna now you're having this this is not the first time this is happening and one would and have thought uh, I would have put in proactive measures ever since the so first so because one. if you have applied if you have applied through I mean if you've used to train you find out that is a lonely so we, should we be expecting some patrol like you have patrol of security highways. men you know you have the police patrolling that area and what have you especially at the time where you have this group of persons creating mayhem, you know, this group of persons being extra with their activities. But I, I really don't know. It leaves me very speechless. It leaves me 
um, really sad. It leaves me, there's a lot of mixed feeling regarding this because I feel like we do not, we're not interested in this. Because as long as you have a wheel, there will be a way. There is no wheel here. I've not seen any wheel. There's no wheel. There's no wheel from the federal government. There's no wheel from the state government. There's no wheel. So we're all fingers are crossed. And this is really sad because security is top on the list of every government. It is your responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that lives and properties are protected. People pay their taxes. Taxpayers are paying taxes. And what do they get in turn? We need to understand the origin of government. Government did not come through as, oh, people wanted government. It's as a result of a social contract. And some people said, we will hand over our rights to you, and in turn, you will do X, Y, Z for us. So we will obey the laws, we will pay taxes, and in turn, we expect you to do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And that's how government came through. But you see, the contract has been broken. So people are paying their taxes, but government is not keeping to the other side of the bargain. And mm. we don't care. Of course, we're closer to the, uh, you know, the election year. What, what are we concerned about? Getting the political parties, I mean, trying to, you know, sort out who becomes the next governor, who becomes the next president. And these are issues that are top on the list, the issue of governance. And we're not paying attention to it. Yeah, indeed. Um, the Kaduna state government, uh, you know, was also quoted as saying that um, they were able to, you know, put the situation, um, check the situation as it were, and then there, there was um, some military intervention. But my, 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 my question right now would be, you know, that was more reactionary than being proactive. In as much as the military came out to do what they could have done, I feel that is not really enough. Kaduna is, uh, has been like a hotbed for, you know, lots of um, issues in recent times. Like you rightly said, Mercy, two days, three days ago, over the weekend, that is, uh, you know, the airport was attacked. One would have um, thought that um, security would have been put on high alert. You know, the airport was attacked, now the rail track. So, what kind of signals are these bandits actually sending out there? You know, they're trying to tell governments that uh, your, your airport is not safe, your, your rail tracks are not safe, your roads have never been safe over time. Are they trying to say that they are in charge? We need the Cardona state government to come out and uh, give some sort of explanation so, to the citizenry. They need to really know if they can actually trust government to, you know, to protect their lives and property because um, this is just one attack too many. Kaduna uh, Abuja road track has been attacked even before now. What measure or what measures were put in place to ensure that uh, you know, to forestall a recurrence? So, so how come we are having a similar attack and not too long after? These are the questions that um, government need to be, you know, answering also. But let's just uh, move away from that. But, but just before we move away, I mean, ahead, yeah. really sorry to bring us back here. It's mm -hmm. at the point where you have the minister for culture. I mean, the Minister Lai for Mohammed. Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, saying that Nigeria is safer now than ever. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just an irony, just as you make that statement and you have these persons, you know, putting it up. We have not prioritized. It's very saddening. You know, you know why it's saddening? Because it has not happened to you. You have not been in that situation. You know those who have lost their life in the course of all of this? Those who, those who, have, those who have lost their lives? Not because they would have died, but because they live in a society, they live in a country where government, it's not, nobody's business. We're thinking about political parties are having uh, their conventions and then they are selecting who becomes the next governor and president. Nobody cares about that. Nobody's saying, no, nobody, no, it's right nobody's, now. nobody's business. Thinking about the people and you had right talked now. about being proactive, but we're never proactive. We're reactive. We wait for things to happen before we send the army there. But this is not the first time this is happening. We have seen that these guys are increasing in their tactics, and one would think that we would double our effort as a people but we haven't shown all of that strength mm. and it's sad very sad and what a time to be a Nigerian mm. well I just uh, hope that uh, this time around we'll begin to do the right things because uh, Nigerians are dying Nigerians have been kidnapped um, we cannot continue to be living like refugees in our own land well having said that uh, I don't want to get too emotional this morning uh, also making around some all through yesterday, Will Smith, um, Jada Pink, and uh, you know, and uh, Chris Rock uh, were in the news. Uh, you know, if you just uh, search uh, Google, Twitter, you know, I'm sure one of the top searches you would see will be Will Smith, uh, Jada Pinkett, alopecia, hair loss, baldness, and uh, the Oscars, and all of that. You know, a lot of a lot of people have come out to speak for and against uh, you know Will Smith over what happened um, at the Oscars. Some have come. Out to say that um, 
it is good for a man to you know, you know to stand up for the family, to stand up for his woman. A lot of people have said that uh, fine, in as much as he you know is speaking for or standing for his family, he should have um, you know kept it together somehow. He should have been able to just hold it all back without having you know. <laughs> to hit and Chris Rock, who looked all shocked. Some people have even asked if if those uh, if the whole stuff you know was staged. You know, uh, Chris Rock you know looked like an excellent um, dramatist in all of that. Before that, and uh, Will Smith was you know seen there saying uh, some expletives and um, how um, Chris uh, Rock should um, keep um, his wife out of um, you know. The host of, and as you can see, he was all uh, teared up there when he was given his acceptance speech, you know, for the award that he won for uh, King Richard. So, um, I mean, it's it's gotten a lot of people talking, not necessarily just the Nigerians, the entire, everyone is, everyone seemed to have an opinion about, you know, this particular situation. And a lot of persons have expected that you would have, you know, Will Smith should have acted differently. But you know, you can't actually control how people would react most times, especially when their emotions are, you know, involved at this point. Uh, it was a little bit overboard, and one would have expected that he should have, you know, taken it and, you know, just swallow it and probably just go behind the scenes. But until you're faced with that situation, you never can tell how much True. you will react. True. On the other hand, he's, he's, he's apologized. I mean, yes, not he, he, he made an apology while he was accepting the speech, but his. Uh, uh, apologized again on Twitter and he's apologized to uh, Chris for his behavior. He's condemned the fact that the ultimate role is to love, kindness, and there's no violence. Violence is not accepted anywhere because that was a violent act and it's very condemnable, uh, really. But you also want to look at it on the other hand, mm. the issue of provocation. Yeah. And I, I remember that, you know, the part of the Bible where Nigerian parents always quote that, you know, parents, you have to obey your children, your children, you have to obey your parents and all of that so you may live long. But you also forget the other part that, you know, parents don't provoke your children to anger and all of yeah, that. So that was it. Uh, but it, it can be very emotional, especially the fact that, you know, uh, you have talked about the hashtag alopecia. Mm. And uh, in 2018, Jada Smith actually talked about, she come out, she, come, she came to out to talk about, open up at the, talk about the condition that she's faced with. There's a condition that makes you begin to lose your hair. And that's the reason why she took off her hair, really. Mm. Now, if you want to, uh, you know, because it, it, it took me a couple of, I mean, it took me some time to understand the joke initially. If you, if you listen to the joke by Chris Rock, mm. now, so the G... I, Jane joke was really a joke about um, a moral. movie action. So the, it's, it's a movie that her. happened in 1997. Uh, the lead character, Jordan O'Neill, mm. was the first woman to go through a Navy SEAL training. But in order for her to complete the training, I mean, you, can, you know how this military training can be very, very, you know, off and all of that. So in order for her to go through that training, she needs to shave her hair. And that when she shaved her hair, that's why she got, you know, that title, G.I. Jane. And so for Chris to actually, Allude in to 2018, that. so if, if Jada Smith had, uh, you know, talked about, opened up and talked about her struggle, she looks very pretty with her hair. Uh, she talked about the fact that she's going through a situation, the alopecia, and this is the reason why she has to go through it. It can, it can be very painful. Yeah, Some people will want to connect personal. it to, so, it's very sensitive. It's a sensitive mm -hmm. thing. One would expect that Chris Rock is, the more understanding. Uh, should understand. Just how He's far, out what, there. He, he, he should know where to draw the line. Just how far. What limit should really? you, you know, go? So one would know that this is where to draw the line. So I, I, I see a lot of reactions from Nigerians. You saw Ubi Franklin calling out, uh, what's his name again? Was it Baskin out? I don't remember. He called out one of these comedians saying, oh, you made jokes about my family and all of that, but people need to understand where a joke is a joke. And no, when somebody no, says, is no, it not? the line. You know, sometimes you could be joking. I could be joking with you and say, hey, stop. But you don't know where to draw the line. But however you say it, from both ends, I mean, no one is really right. Yeah. But the most important thing is the fact that Smith has actually accepted that he's done wrong. Yes. What he did was really bad. He's embarrassed himself. But he, he couldn't really control his emotions, especially when his wife was being shamed mm. about, you know, mm. a certain illness. That she's talked about in 2018. That's a long time, the 2022. So the, the moral of the story for me would be that let's be very 
sensitive. Let's be careful. Be very sensitive. People are going through a lot. The most that we can do is let's be kind with our words and with our actions. Yeah, so at least try to understand people better. You know, it might be a joke to you, but some people, these struggles are really something very deep for them, something personal. And um, if, if for her to have come out to say that she uh, has issue with um, hair loss, uh, it, 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 it makes her a very strong woman. Not everybody would want to come out and admit to that. Some people would just hide with um, hair and makeup and all of that. Uh, but she actually advocated you know, that um, it's something that she has um, had to deal with. And uh, so people who also have similar stuff can actually know how to you know, go about it. But then again, we don't promote violence anywhere, anytime. So indeed, uh, Will Smith has um, owned up and he has a Apologize. I think um, people should just let him be. And you know, there's something that really happened. There's some uh, advice that was given to him by Denzel just before, you know, uh, you know, something about how the devil attacks uh, at <laughs> the highest point. <laughs> a lot, a lot of things have actually came out of all of He's that. He's just human. Of, I mean, it's just natural. Yes, I, I, to have all yeah. of that. I think uh, the, the, the world should the forgive day, him. The, the, yeah, the, the most important thing is, you know, both parties have. Mm. Um, and um, Chris didn't take it up at all. No, he didn't take it up. I mean, because it came to him as a, a shock. You know that thing where you never You can just imagine Messi was just on stage, you know, you, you know, uh, it, it, the whole side. Like some he now behind the some lady just came out from nowhere and dragged out your wig. <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone walking here and slapping, you know, because you, you, you never saw like, it coming. So you'd be like, oh my, it's what's going, going on? on? To, uh, what did I miss? In a few seconds, you have to have a reboot and all of that. But hey, uh, see, so the most important thing. You know, re, um, brain set, reset, slap, you know. And people, was also, people were also alluding it to the whole Bianca thing. <laughs> yeah, Nigerians are very funny. You know how we know we, you know how we like to stay on top of everything and yes, just uh, seriously. You know, make fun out of every situation. But that's it, though. Yeah, uh, lastly, uh, social media was also trending. Ruga, uh, you know, sexual assault. Um, as it is, uh, is also still trending in um, you know various. Um, Fora and people are still talking about it. Uh, the social media is a buzz about what happened during his performance, and um, a lot of people have blamed him that uh, it was the way. The fact is that um, men also get harassed. That's that's one thing people should know. And um, the for he to. <laughs> Mercy, there's a whole lot to talk about this thing, but the fact is that uh, most people like uh, why why so much talk? It's just a man, you know. So uh, why should he make so much? Uh, why should people be making so much buzz about it? But the fact is that um, uh, everyone has his right, and everyone, you know, you know, should be treated um, equally. Be you a man or be a woman. Uh, social media is just uh, so 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 funny sometimes the way they just go about things. I bet. Was it was it his fault? Uh, why was the why did the woman come onto him? What, what how do you react, Mercy? Really? Well, so so just like you have mentioned the issue, and that's why um, the, the conversation about feminism would mm. always when people talk about feminism and all of that, people always say that oh, you know it's one sided thing. It's it's a it's a gender issue, and if we talk about gender, it's not about a specific gender, so it it cuts across. But now what happened to? Ruga is what happens to a lot of men out there. And like you have mentioned, first of all, we live in a society where the culture of silence is predominant. And so whether or not you're a woman or a man, silence is always it. Because usually people don't people are ashamed to talk about their struggles and uh, whatever it is that they have encountered. People victims don't want to talk. Mm. Sometimes I feel like, oh, how would people react and all for of that? It. Okay, so uh, I, I feel like that video that happened, a couple of persons have constantly, you know, pointed and highlighted that that was sexual assault and harassment. Mm -hmm. But most interesting is the fact that Ruga himself hasn't really buttressed the fact that he was assaulted. He's, mm -hmm. He hasn't seen it as an assault and harassment. For whatever reason, I don't know what's going in through his mind, I can't really say, but this is the point. People go through stuff, whether women, women or men, oh, and mostly it might be men, and maybe because you know culture. I, I I don't know where we got all of that from, and even generally with people. So you want to talk about some sort of tell you, ah, why you you're, you're weak, you're crying, why are you crying? People should be allowed to cry. If you want to cry, go ahead and cry. As a man, nobody says to you should cry. Things, cry. Talk about the struggles, talk about the pain, because we're humans at the end of the day. So I don't know where that comes from. As long as you have blood flowing in your vein, you're a human being. And so you are subjected yeah, to all steel. of these issues. You live in a society where um, you have perverts, whether they're men or they're women. 
And we can't take that. But the interesting fact for me is the fact that Ruger didn't highlight the issue. But you, you, you also had another issue where he was on top of the issue. <laughs> so your own issue is that you're not talking about it. One would have expected that he should say it. Mm. Say that you were touched inappropriately and you didn't like it. Mm. And, and it, you, I mean, of course, it's wrong. Someone touches you without your permission. And that is harassment. It and is. that's what we talked about. It so for, for the fact that he didn't talk about it is what I don't understand. Maybe he just felt like, oh, it's okay to be a gentleman. Even if it necessarily doesn't mean anything to him, or he could let that slide, it would just be also a way to let people know that, you know, people need to respect people's privacy. True. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so that's uh, <laughs> the, 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 my producer just whispering things into my ear. So, but well, I'll just let no, that up. <laughs> no, and you saw. So there's been a lot of we have to say. There's been a lot of comparison if you were other actors. If it were brother boy, boy. Actors, it <laughs> you, permit me to say in the street what it would deck you. <laughs> you will receive a blow. <laughs> <laughs> from the stage, but of course that would be violence. That would be you acting, you know, True, differently. And but we we, we need to say this to everyone who attends events. Uh, you you also people need to respect people's people. People you need to know where to draw the line. No, there, there's something like yeah. draw the line. You but need to respect space. You want to dance with your celebrity or your or someone, but just know that um, they they have their privacy and you should respect them. But so because we live in a society where people don't do that. So have you gone to the market? Hmm. I hate to go to the market. I hate to go to Lagos. You know, market Lagos. I guess you order. Online. No, you when you go there, huh? they drag you at every yes, point. People are me? dragging your hand. People are harassing you. And they no, don't now. have the right to do such things. I just let's just leave it at that, Jerry. Uh, that's as much as we can take on top trend. And so, I uh, mean, you know, of all the stories, also read up and then make decision for yourself and live better lives and know when to, uh, you know, draw the line and know how to respect people's privacy. People have the right to their privacy. Let them believe and let live. That's where I'll just leave all of that. It's still the breakfast. I will take a, a quick break and uh, we'll go off the press and review the front pages of major dailies in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs>